I know that we have got at least three or four schools represented, uh, probably about four schools represented in our church, and that is just powerful. I'm excited about what the teachers, please, uh, and those that work in the schools, please let us know if there's any way we can be involved, help you uh, in any situation. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word? 2 Samuel chapter number 12 and verse 20. If you will preach with me, I'll preach. If you don't preach with me, I'll preach. <laughs> but I'd rather you preach with me. Amen? 2 Samuel chapter number 12, verse number 20. Now let me make a preference here before I read. Back, if you'll back up to about verse 13, 14, and 15. David is told by the prophet Nathan, because of his sin, your son will not live. David begins to pray and begins to ask God. In verse 20, it says, So David arose from the ground. This is after it's been at least seven days. He washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house, and when he had requested they set food before him, he ate. Then a servant said to him, What is this that you have done? You fasted, and you wept for your child while he was alive, but when he died, you arose and ate food. And he said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that, he may, that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Or why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? Or shall I go to him? But he shall not return to me. Heavenly Father, I pray for the anointing today. And I pray to anoint everyone to the sound of my voice. That God, you will do according to your word. I claim what you promised that you would do this morning. I rebuke any hindrances. I, I rebuke any distractions. I, and I pray for lives to be changed. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. I would like to preach to you upon the subject, uh, the breakthrough uh, of moving on. The breakthrough of moving on. Uh, this year, our theme, uh, amen, has been moving, uh, moving forward. Uh, and uh, I, I believe we're moving closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. Come on, shout amen. I'm excited about the rapture. How about you? The Bible tells us that some will not want to hear that. They don't want to hear about it. They want to bring teachers that will sue them and tell them, okay, but I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. A person asked me the other day uh, about, well, what, you know, if, if, if that uh, little fellow over there in North Korea decides to shoot, he thinks he can reach the coast of, of where we're at right now. And I was in California, and I thought, well, if God doesn't want that to take place, then there's enough praying here uh, that can stop those uh, missiles from making uh, uh, the United States. Uh, and yet I know that, that, the, that, that the sabers are rattling. Uh, and think about it. Who, uh, who's their buddy, child? What's the Bible talk about? Uh, amen. The armies uh, at the end time. So, folks, uh, I think we better get in uh, and get with it uh, and worship God uh, and live for God and be empowered by God uh, and love God uh, and witness for God and quit playing church. It's time. Can you shout amen? Oh, my friend, I, I was thinking I was walking down the aisle uh, uh, of the corridor of uh, 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 that, uh, uh, that Coliseum or that arena. I thought it, it, we were talking about the times, uh, and, and they were talking about in 2020 something's going to take place. Uh, and I thought my mind went back to, to the year 1999, uh, right before the year 2000. Everybody was worried. Uh, it was Y2K, uh, the moment it turned... 
<coughs> excuse me, the moment it turned uh, to the year 2000, uh, all the things were going to shut down. Uh, everything was going to go in chaos. Uh, we had people preaching that Lord was coming in the 2000. And because he didn't come, many people are disappointed, deceived, and quit the church. Uh, I don't know when he's coming, but I know he's coming. Uh, and I know it could be today. Uh, and I want to be ready. Uh, I don't want to be on fire. I don't want to give him praise. Uh, I don't want to walk with him. Amen. So there was a lot of people that got on fire for a few months after Y2K. We had 9-11. A few months after that, people got in. And things settled down. Folks, we just need to be ready. Do you believe he's coming soon? Oh, yeah. I believe with all my heart I will see it in my lifetime. But I'm, tell, I'm not giving up. Jesus is coming. Come on, church. We need to shout a little bit better about that. I don't want to be so carnal that I'm like Lot's wife, that Lot's being pulled out of, I, 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 I'm not even on my message yet, uh, uh, Lot's being pulled out of, uh, uh, out of, uh, out of, uh, out of Sodom. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he wasn't going on his own totally. Even though he knew it was going to be destroyed, they still, had, the angel had to grab him and pull him out. Uh, and as he was headed out, uh, they had so much of the flesh in his wife that she turned back and looked, turned into a pillar of fall. I don't want to be that way. I want to look for is coming. I want to rejoice because he's coming back. For the Bible says the Lord will ascend with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and Christ and the dead in Christ are going to rise and thee which are alive and remain shall meet the Lord in the air and honey we're out of here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Katie was talking about in their class what wouldn't be there. There would be a lot of things that wouldn't be there. No more sorrow. No more pain. And no more trouble, no more situations, no more drugs, no more, no, no sin won't be there. Friends, Jesus is coming. Mm. That's not even my message, but somebody need to hear that. Amen. But I want to talk to you this morning about the breakthrough of moving on. People often lock, lock away their little nightmares and in tight little closets. But they, there's real no, really no hiding place behind, before God. David had sexual sin, murder, and all was premeditated. Now his child is dying. The man after God's own heart is laid in the floor, floor of the palace, begging God for grace and judgment deferred. Seven days he laid on the floor, Asking God to not let his son die. And then it was over. The others on the other side, why are you there? Why are you doing what you're doing? But I want to ask you this question. How do we move on and have victory either way the situation happens? You see, my friends, uh, sometimes when people, when, when it doesn't happen the way we want it to, we're good fit throwers. Boy, y'all's not shouting good this morning. Let me say it again. You know, as long as we get, the, get our way, we love the pastor. But if we don't get our way, I'm going to keep saying that till y'all shout a little bitter. <laughs> you see, I mean, David wasn't getting his way. So what did David do? The Bible says that David prayed. He asked for forgiveness. Uh, he faced his circumstances. Uh, he spent time on his face uh, instead of on Facebook. Uh, he was before the Lord uh, instead of on a roof or, or in a dark corner. Uh, amen, friend. Don't let the enemy uh, beat you down. Uh, if you've asked God to forgive you, uh, if you've asked God to change you, uh, if you're walking away, then you're forgiven and you need to forgive others. But you got to move on. Can you shout amen? It was a very hard time for David. Uh, knowing, uh, amen, the story, amen, that he had to walk through. Uh, he had sinned. Uh, he had lied. Uh, he had committed adultery. He had committed murder. Uh, and now uh, his consequences of his sin uh, was catching up from him. Uh, amen. He walked to the presence of God. Nathan walked and said, you're the man that sinned. Uh, and the Bible says David prayed this prayer. He said, have mercy upon me, O God. 
God, according to your loving kindness, uh, according to the multitudes of your tender mercies, uh, blot out my transgressions. Uh, and God did. Uh, come on, somebody. Amen. Let's go forward in the presence of God. You say, I don't really know how long I'm going to preach, but I'm telling you, it's time to move on. Are y'all listening to me? I've, I've, I know some folks that you, it's the same old cotton picking. How many knows what cotton picking means? It's the same old cotton picking story. They moan and groan and they gripe. They, it didn't work out like they wanted to. Uh, and, and they want to blame God because of what they, uh, and because of their sins. Uh, and they're, they're reaping their sins. You know we sow seed, church? I don't care what anyone says. I, I'm praying for some crop failures in my life. Are y'all with me? It's easy to find when we're done wrong, it's easy to point a finger and look at them and look how bad they are and look how they need it. And, and they're doing this and they're doing this. Uh, and we've got to realize that when we point a finger, there's at least three fingers pointing back at us. Uh, and David realized that he needed to repent and he fell before God uh, and he fasted and he prayed uh, and he asked God to do something. Uh, he asked God to move in his life. Come on, somebody. You may have done the wrong uh, or you may have been done wrong. Uh, but it's time to get up and move forward and let God do something in your life. Mm. Isaiah 58, verse 6. I'm going to take time to read this because David fasted and wept. But listen, is it not the fast that I've chosen? God's given a promise here to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo heavy burdens. Mm -mm, you don't have to leave here in, in bondage. To oppress, to go free. That you break every yoke. My friend, when you repent, it's time to start walking different. Come on, help me. Mm, God forgive me. And then right outside the door, you start doing it again. Mm, come on, preach with me. It's starting to walk. Let's walk different. Let's live different. Let's act different. Let's worship different. Let's get in. Amen. It is not shared your head, uh, your head br bread with hunger, hunger, hungry, and that you bring your house to the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Uh, then your light shall bring forth like the morning. Uh, your healing shall spring forth speedily, uh, and your righteous shall go before you. Uh, that's the Lord. Uh, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard, uh, and then you'll call, uh, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say here I am uh, if you take away the yoke uh, and the mist and pour the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness uh, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then your light shall be in dawn in the darkness uh, and your darkness shall be as the noonday uh, and the Lord will guide you continually uh, and satisfy your soul in the drought do you hear what I'm saying uh, if you call upon God uh, God will bring you out of darkness uh, he'll bring you out of a drought and he'll flood your soul give him a hand clap of praise thank you about Lord guide you and satisfy your soul and drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose water do not fail those from among you shall build the old waste places and you shall raise up the foundation of many generations and you shall be called the repair of the breach that's Jesus the restore of the streets to dwell in if you turn amen away your foot from the Sabbath from doing the pleasures of my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight the holy day the Lord uh, amen honorable and he shall honor him uh, and not do in your own ways uh, nor find in your own pleasure nor speak in your own words uh, then you shall delight in the Lord uh, it yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob and the mouth of the Lord has spoken what he is saying he called upon God God forgave him uh, and that was the beginning uh, of moving on and giving him victory do you want victory to this morning well second thing I want you to look at and I told you I won't go preach long this morning mm, David worshipped he got up he realized they were over there whispering the baby had died he wasn't alive God didn't answer his prayer now what's he going to do he didn't get his way, so now he's mad. 
No. The Bible says that he washed himself. And he began to worship. He began to give God praise. You see, it was a time he would put on new garments. It was a new day. He was going forward. God's speaking to someone this morning. He wants you to go forward. You got to let go of things. No matter what's happened to you, you got to let go of it. You can hold it all you want to, and it'll just make you miserable. You can say, well, if I let go of it, they'll get away with it. No, they won't. Did you hear me? And as long as you're holding on to it, you're just as wrong as they are. I don't want to hear that. I don't either. I don't like it any more than you do. I'm just as normal as you are. I mean, if someone does me wrong, how many has the nature? I want to get them back. But aren't you glad that God doesn't get us back? But he forgives us and he changes us. And David began to worship God and he began to call upon the name of the Lord. (laughs) David had sinned and he repented. He put on new garments. He was going forward. He wasn't digging up the past of anyone or anything with a heart of realizing that God was leading. Uh, and now David's focus was on God's will and not his. Uh, he closed the book on sin and passed and moved on. It's time some of you call, close the book on sin uh, of the past uh, and quit going back to it and quit living in it and move forward because uh, you need victory and you need anointing uh, and you need a touch of God and it's time to move on. Quit using the... Well, glory. All right, I'm going to talk to you. You see, some folks like to use it for a crutch, kind of a safety mix, mix of me. Because you see, when you repent and you do right, that makes you accountable. That means I can't do right. Oh, I like the way y'all shouted on that. Come on, make up your mind that I'm moving forward. I'm going to do more for God than I've ever done. I'm going to worship more than I've ever worshipped. I'm going to pray more than I've ever prayed. I'm going to give more than I've ever gave because I know God is moving me forward. Come on, church. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in the same old spot. I want to, I want to get closer to Him. I want to get closer to the light. Sure, it puts my, amen, a light on me, but there's something about getting closer to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Just something about it when you're in love with Jesus. I do not like being away from Miss Sandra. This council, we were at the general council, it's the national meeting of the Sims of God for people from all over the world. And there was some pretty important business that needed to be decided and leadership, right people in right positions. And I've seen God move in this council like I've never seen him move in any other council. There was a get-together after a certain night, and it could have been a gripe session, but you know what it was? It was men and women in a room at 10.30 a night that would be 12.30 here for an over an hour praying that God would move in the assemblies of God. Thank God for that. Can you shout amen? amen? Walked in the meeting of the first meeting of the business session. Our leadership began to lead us in prayer. And we sit spending 30 minutes of the first 30 minutes in business and things like that. We spent the first 30 minutes of praying and seeking God. I think we can have revival when we see things like that. Can you give the Lord a hand, cup of praise? (laughs) But it's time to move on, church. It's time to go forward. It's time to let God be God in your life. Let God be real in your life. Amen. Don't, 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 Don't get offended if God says no. Come on, help me. We like yes. We don't like no. Come on, help me. God wants to grow you. He might use a deacon. He might use a Sunday school teacher. He might use the pastor. He might use somebody. But God wants to grow you. As I said, the closer I get to him, the more I love him. I remember, matter of fact, to be honest with you, Friday afternoon, I was there from Sunday well, I didn't actually get there till about midnight Sunday because of the weather and had to go out. So actually, I guess it'd be our time about 2 o'clock. 
And I got there, and, you know, you're excited about doing some stuff, seeing some old buddies and stuff like that. Well, Friday afternoon, I packed my suitcase. Had it all packed, and I called the airlines. And I thought if it wouldn't cost too much, I'd fly home and surprise Sandra. Because I was ready to come home. So they wouldn't do it. They would do it for a nominal fee. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't want to live in Anaheim, California. A hamburger costs you 20 bucks. I'm telling you, it's, that's why I could lose weight out there, I'm telling you. <laughs> but I got him. I want to share this with you because I really feel... God laid this on my heart, you know. I mean, I come this morning expecting God to do something. I come ex this morning excited about getting to be in church with you. About feeling the presence of God. And you know what? The devil don't want us to feel the presence of God. Amen. Amen. So we need to get in, church. I mean, amen. come to these altars. Worship God. Don't walk out of here, amen, the same way you came. Let God do things in your life. If you got sin, repent. If you're struggling with something, get, let God get a hold of you. Well, after I called the airlines and I was mad at them, <laughs> so I got my bags ready and all that stuff and my flight, our flight, I was with another friend of mine and his flight was the same time mine was, so it was at 6.45, and so I got up at 3 o'clock to get there at 6.45, and I got there, and, and uh, um, I was ready to go, and flew into Dallas, and I got my truck, and the closer I got home, the more excited I got, because I was going to get to see my baby. The closer I got there, they realized, you know, I really love this woman. The closer I got to her, the more I just, I just realized, hey. And the closer you get to Jesus, the more you'll love him. Now, I realize he's pure light. I realize that he, when he shines on us, he shows everything. But my wife knows about everything about me. And she still loves me. God knows everything about you. Now, listen to me. You walked in, God knows everything that you got all over you. We might as well not put on airs and act like something we're not. And just let God be God in our life. Now we can be the same old church that we've been, or we can be different. Are y'all with me? How many wants to be a different church? You want God to move in, your, in this church in a mighty way. Well, then we got to ante up. How many knows what that means? Uh-huh, I know what y'all been doing. Anyway, I'll go on. <laughs> How do you know, Pastor? My great-grandmother told me. Anyway, but it's time to move forward. It's time to have victory. David began to worship God. He put a new garment on. Did you hear me? He put a new garment on. In other words, he was going to live different. He was going to walk different. He was going to act different. He was going to let go of the past and put it behind him. And he was going to do great and mighty things for God. He was moving forward towards God from the past. Amen. From the trouble and the, uh, into the arms of the Savior. He went, amen, to the house of God. Uh, listen to me. With the fellowship of God uh, and the church. And he, David said, I have done wrong. And God says, I forgive you. David says, I'm hurting. And God says, I'll heal you. David says, Lord Almighty. And God says, you are loved. Come on, somebody. Let's realize we can't move forward in the power of God. Breakthrough means victory. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Let's see if God kept his word. Verse 24. David comforted. Sheba, his wife, and went into her and laid with her, so she bore a son, and they called his name Solomon. Now the Lord loved him, and he sent word by the hand of Nathan, the prophet, so he called his name Jedidiah, because of 
the Lord. I close with these next few mo moments. Make up your mind. You're not going to be the one that misses the forgiveness of repentance. Did you hear me? Don't miss. Don't waste such a wonderful life but not getting right with God. God never intended for you to carry stuff around. He's the breaker of chains. Well, I like that, amen. He's the breaker of bondage. And he's the restorer. I just read you, he's the restorer of the breach. I, you see, man was separated from God. I, amen. I, and, and there was no way to get us in there. Oh, but the Bible tells us, amen, there was something between, put between man and God. And his name is Jesus. I, and he proves the head of Satan. And it proves the heel of Jesus. I, and Jesus is here to set us free, church. You see, you're loved. Amen. Do you realize that you're truly loved? God intended to help you. Day. Yes, David repented. Uh, yes, Bathsheba and David would be reminded sometimes by some people and things that would happen along the way of what happened to them. Uh, but just David knew uh, there was nothing uh, but to move on after the death of his son, uh, to worship the Lord. For there's nothing to gain at the tomb of sin, uh, but there is all to gain uh, for me to live as Christ uh, and to die as gain. Uh, he loves you. He'll forgive you. He'll give you a breakthrough and he will set you free hallelujah would you stand to your feet please hallelujah to the Lamb. hallelujah to the Lamb. every head bowed every eye closed prayer team would you come quickly please thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I always give an altar call for someone to ask Jesus in their heart. But this service is not just for that. It's for others that have been struggling for not letting go of some things. But the first question I want to ask you, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Are you truly ready to meet the Lord? Are you truly saved? Do you know Him? I didn't ask you if you've been baptized in water. I didn't ask you if you shook the free. I didn't ask you to remember. Do you know Jesus? Are you saved? Do you have that relationship with God? You don't have to con yourself. You don't have to say things. You just know you're right with God. If you're not, you need to be. God will give you victory. God will give you what you need. God will set you free. If you don't know the Lord is your Savior, why nobody's looking around for just a moment, please. You don't know Jesus. You're not saved. If you'd like to be, would you raise your hand? Is there one? Is there one? I'm not where I ought to be with God. Thank you, Lord. Be honest with yourself. Second question I want to ask is this. Pastor, I've had a hard time of moving on. I won't let go of some things. My past seems to keep coming back. Someone's let me down. Or something's happened. He said, I haven't been able to move on, and I want that breakthrough today. If that's you, would you raise your hand? God bless those hands. Hold those hands up. Hold those hands up. I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to ask you to come after I get through praying for God to give you victory. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see these hands raised. God, they need to move on. They need to let go of it. God, you said you would give us victory, that you would give them the breakthrough that they need. And God, I claim that right now in the name of Jesus. God, that they will no longer look back. They won't dig up the past. But God, they're moving on because the past is gone. Touch of my prayers. They, Lord, I'm asking them to give them that courage that they'll make that step from this altar. Leave here with victory. In Jesus' name, if you raised your hand, come on. You got your hand raised. I need that, Pastor. I need that today. Would you come? Kneel at these altars.
We're going to believe God for you.